And what we're trying to do is to make sure that people are empowered in our community. So this particular event is open to the public. It is free for people to attend. And it's also geared to help out a couple of different facets of people. So it is for our students as far as high school, college, professionals, and then also entrepreneurs and business owners. Cool. Um, I see a couple of people that I know right here, Chanel and uh, Carrie. Yep. Uh, I've heard of Joe. I've never met Joe Dudley, and uh, you have Pat B. Freeman who's also in here. So uh, when we're there, what can we expect? Well, you can expect to hear stories from each of them because one of the things that I think is interesting when people get famous or they get big is what was their story in the beginning? How did they transition from starting wherever they, you know, whatever their starting point was up until they arrived? Um, and so each person definitely has an individual story and a dream that I think that people can relate to. And we, wanna, we wanted to pick people for this particular series that were at different facets in their career. Mm -hmm. So each person has something different to offer professionally. Um, you know, Shonil, like you mentioned, um, Ms. Shonil Foster, she is the CEO of Footsteps to Follow. And so that's a nonprofit organization. So it's a lot of different facets to the people that we pick to give uh, our students and the attendees some inspiration. That's awesome. Um, you've been, you're always into everything. You had uh, the event last week that I wasn't able to make, and so now this is going on. Uh, let's talk about this. This is on King Day, so it's very strategic, and tomorrow is Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s holiday. His birthday just passed. Um, what do you want to get across you, you with the uh, you know national? What is this? National Black. National Black MBA Association. Yeah, I just wanted to know. Yes, okay. National Black MBA Association. You guys are, you know, uh, making sure that you're getting out the word, you know, just and helping people achieve their dreams a lot, you know, amongst the African American community. Where do you think we are as far as, you know, Martin Luther King's dream? Wow. Um, I think that's a good question. I definitely think with the National Black MBA Association, we're on track. Um, a lot of people don't know about the organization in general, but I am the president of the Piedmont Triad Chapter. Here in North Carolina, there are three chapters. So ours, uh, there's one in the Raleigh-Durham area and then one also in Charlotte. And the organization is really built on making sure that people continue to find their dream. So our mantra for the National Black MBA Association is empowering visionaries. And that, to me, is definitely one of the things that Martin Luther King set forth to do. Um, it didn't matter what your race was. And I think that even with our organization, it can kind of be a misnomer because um, you don't have to be black to join. You don't have to have your MBA to join. But it is something for people to aspire to, to continue to get their education and then to give back is something that is embedded within our organization through our Leaders of Tomorrow program, which focuses on middle and high school students. So um, as far as with our organization, I would definitely say we're on track with the dream um, to help people get jobs, to help people uh, continue to get education and to give back to the community. Sounds like something I need to do. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm all about uh, following dreams and all that. So, okay, um, you are, you know, of course, you, your brand, Lady Business, and then you're you're the president of this organization. How has this helped, uh, maybe, you know, you with your business? And then how can this possibly help other people who you know want to be entrepreneurs? Because last time you were here uh -huh. a couple weeks ago, you know, we were, you know, trying to get people out to, you know, have some, you know. Uh, um, go to the uh, event last week at small GTCC, business summit, uh -huh. the Small Business Summit. Thank you. I forgot the name really quick. I think you saw that in my eyes right yeah, there. Yeah, it's okay. You I got saw you. That in my I got eyes. you. I got you. That's the empowerment right there. I saw it. <laughs> That's the thing you can't see out there listening. <laughs> but at yeah, the Small Business Summit uh, last week, you know, just to help people get out of education, how has this helped? your uh, business and, and, and thrive? Well, I would definitely say that I have connected with people that have made me want to do better. And I think that that's some things that are missing sometimes. Sometimes you get comfortable around the people that you, uh, you know and they are in your circles. So whenever you see somebody that is um, achieving, whether it's personally or professionally, it tends to make you want to do better, not in a competition thing, but just to say, what can I do to improve myself? Um, and I can say that there is a large difference in between the chapters. We're the smallest chapter in North Carolina, um, but we were founded by Mr. Lewis Judge, and he works over at North Carolina A&T State University. And he brought the chapter back because originally it was founded in Winston-Salem. So one of the things that I think is interesting is that you'll see a big difference in the chapters because it's a little bit more um, corporate focus when you're in the Raleigh or the Charlotte chapter. And that's just because of where they're located. Here, I would say we have a lot more business owners and entrepreneurs um, and a heavy influx of people that are in school. 
and whether they're like 30 and up or whether they're 18 to 20 something and up, um, you know, they're still trying to achieve whatever their dream is. Talk about uh, you and achieving your personal dreams and, and like where did it all start for you? Okay, that's a long story. That's a whole nother show. But um, hey, look, we got time. <laughs> that's the thing about this. We I got know, time. I don't, I, know. I don't have to get to a song. <laughs> <laughs> that's good though. Um, I guess for me, my personal dream started at Elon. Um, I went to Elon University, so I'm a Phoenix, and I graduated in 2001. Uh, one of the things that I always wanted to do was kind of be in charge of things. So I could tell just with myself that there were steps that needed to be taken in order to achieve what I wanted to see as an ending result. Um, something as far as entertainment, media, it was always something that I was interested in. Not necessarily to be the person in front of the screen, but to always make the people around me kind of look good and feel good. So when I graduated, um, one of the things that I did was I managed poets for a long time. Oh, nice. And that was an interesting thing. It was able to, okay, he's snapping over there. <laughs> <laughs> you might not, I don't know if you can hear the snaps in the background. <laughs> but um, that was an interesting thing because this was the Love Jones time. So this is when you could actually get paid to be a poet as opposed to just going to open mics and <laughs> paying to get in. Um, <laughs> and so that was one of the things to me that was interesting was to be able to take a person from I'm doing my art to I want to get paid to do my art. So for me, that was the start of everything. Um, and then, you know, I worked some jobs in between there, but I just knew for me I wasn't a corporate person, but I always continued to get education. That was one of my biggest things, and it still is, because you can always learn something new. So even though now, you know, 10, 15 years later, um, you know, I teach, but I still continue to go to classes. I still take webinars. I still go to other people's functions because it's always something that you can learn. So it's been a transition, but it's still always been something where it was just starting from the bottom, now we're here kind of thing. And I think that that's important because people don't take as much time to look at the journey of things. They just want instant gratification nowadays. And it takes time. You know, they say you got to crawl before you walk. And if people will look at that and just realize, everybody says I'm in a struggle, but I just look at it as a journey. You may not necessarily be where you want to be now, but it's something that you have to learn along the way in order for you to be successful. I was uh, in the barbershop one time and I was having a discussion, just an open discussion, you know, you know mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the same in the, in the ladies' uh, hair salon. I go to the barbershop every week, Chris, so, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you can yeah, get, <laughs> get the edge up and everything. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but it's probably different when you walk in. They probably amend their conversations just No, that's, I've been going to my barber for like 15 years. Really? Um, so so you get the full not, scope? You get uh, yeah, the full scope of things? I get the full really, scope. I get into it every week about <laughs> somebody's team. My team is the Ravens slash Eagles. Um, so I have to get into it every week. Are they going to talk about Amber Rose this week in the, in the barbershop? While you're I'm there? sure that Amber Rose will be a topic <laughs> of conversation this week. So, <laughs> so I expect that. When I was, when I was in the barbershop, I, I had a, a this was maybe a few months ago and I was having an open discussion about certain things and um, we were one of the things that I was talking about is you know something I learned in the book and and one of the guys was like you know you read a book you know you read books or whatever it, it was just it was a weird the way he said it to me uh -huh. but then it made me realize that you know there's a lot of people who don't really do it and that's how I was like well yeah you know you know and I was talking about and um, that and he was he was honest he was just like man I probably haven't read uh, any books in school, but he's like, I, you know, I read magazines and newspapers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But he was just like, you know, I just can't get into a book. And and I we had a discussion of why, and I was like, why? Like, why mm -hmm. can't you? And it really is. I think a lot of people associate when we're talking about education, they talk, they associate books with the stuff that you didn't want to read in school. Mm -hmm. You know, with that. So it's kind of so. Talk about the importance of education and then but and finding things that you enjoy to, to read, things you enjoy learning because there's so many the world is vast. You don't mm -hmm. have to just read about Huckleberry Finn mm -hmm. and that's the book you read. I mean there's all kinds of different things. Talk about how you find the things that you love and maintain your education through, you know, these different mediums. Well, I think for me, um, I love to learn. So it gives me great pleasure to know something that somebody else doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the truth. So it's like when I start researching What's or your trying birthday? to 
I'm a Gemini, so June second. Okay. Yeah, so I have that dual personality, uh, crazy thing going so on. I can't <laughs> argue with you because you're gonna always be right. Yes. Yeah. That's see, you see, I told somebody the other day you cannot argue with the Gemini. He's shaking his head. Yeah, he yeah. knows. My husband's <laughs> in here, so he knows. Right? <laughs> He's a Pisces, so 